18 years old my principal came and told me told us in this in our class out of 120 students we had around 70 students i think uh, christian students but this retreat is only for catholic i think anyway so the priest came and told us this the principal i am organizing a retreat for you it is not compulsory everybody said hallelujah good news you know what happened to my retreat nobody went not one person why fed up i had a friend you know uh, he managed to get 12 of us for the retreat december 18th and 19th is my retreat 1976 this was my first retreat i made and came a guy he was the first lay preacher ever to preach the gospel. I don't know how he got in touch with my principal. Maybe he came to the principal and said, you know, can I preach a retreat? And therefore the principal said, I don't know this guy, but he's a lay guy. He wants to preach. So he said, not compulsory. If damage is done, it's done only to 12. Mm -hmm. Look at us. 12 of us attend the retreat. This lay man, 1976, preached the retreat to us. What a guy. What a guy. We were 12. We thought, oh, we'll go make this retreat. Saturday night, it was Saturday, Sunday. Saturday night, we will party. But this guy, the preacher came and killed that party mood. You know what he did? A very shrewd guy. He put six chairs in front, six chairs behind. He stood in the middle. And he preached to us. I want to tell you the best preaching I ever heard then. Of course, now I've heard better. But I'm telling you, amazing guy. We were glued. No songs, no keyboard, nothing. One guy. Two days. Smashed us. We sang two songs in two days. Can you believe it? <laughs> two songs to you. I mean, poor chap is a good preacher. But a horrible singer. <clears throat> Do you know this song? Into my heart, into my heart, into my heart. Come into my heart, Lord Jesus. That song, two days. Morning, into my heart. 11 o'clock, into my heart. 2 o'clock, into my heart. 4 o'clock, into my heart. End of the day, he came into our heart. Hallelujah. What is more important? I'm not saying music is bad. Praise God, our retreats have become much better. But you see, our problem is we don't give the gospel. The gospel will bring conversion. You preach the gospel, it will bring conversion. I'm preaching for the last 34 years. The Lord touched me at that retreat. I heard God tell me, come follow me, Colin. I finished my commerce, got into computers, did successfully well for 12 years. My heart was on God. I said, Lord, I want to give my life to you. I want to become a missionary. And in the year 1992, I left my job. I'm here. Heart. Response. Yeah, you risk some things in life, right? Of course you risk. So, you want to follow the lifestyle, of, the leadership style of Jesus, Hey, make sure, brothers and sisters, get quality resource to your groups, to your ministries, to your parish, please. Don't say he's not from our parish. Excuse me. Bring letter. Oh, excuse me. What bring letter? Are you caught like that? Bring letter. My domain. Who said so? Who said so? It's your domain. Be like Jesus, you know. Be like Jesus. Somebody else was preaching somewhere. They came and told, uh, 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 Master, Master, somebody else is preaching in your name. What did Jesus say? Ban them? Hello. You know what Jesus said? Let them preach. <laughs> yeah. He that is not against me is for me. What's the problem? Please collaborate with others, ministries, movements. Collaborate. After all, you're a shepherd. Bring life to your group. Bring life to your ministry. Bring life to your parish. Bring it. You don't be the stumbling block. Please. 
Listen to me. Don't be the stumbling block for God to bring renewal to your ministry or your parish. Be careful. So make sure you have good people. Develop good people. Have quality resources. Bring them. Develop your sheep. We saw the scripture right in Matthew 9 and as Jesus passed on from there, he saw a man named Matthew sitting at the customs post. He said to me, follow him, said to him, follow me. And he got up and he followed him. Look at that. Response. God will call you. Hello. You know why we come for retreats? For the Lord to speak to us, no? Hello? Hello? You say yes, no? For why you were at a retreat? You know, God will tell you. You know what God will tell you at this retreat? He will tell you, can you leave everything and follow me? I'm telling you. Be careful. Follow me. He got up. You know, another, another version puts it so beautifully. Another version says, immediately. Wow, what a word. You know what dictionary says about immediately? No hesitation. Jesus called Matthew. He dropped everything. Left his work. Followed him. Finished, close. History. Apostle. Who knows? I don't know. But who knows? God will call you. I'm not saying God will call everybody to full-time mission. No. But I want to tell you something. You know, I tell it everywhere across the globe. I want to tell you. I tell all my friends in Bangalore too. Wherever I preach, I tell them this. You see, once you reach the age of 50, 55, take early retirement. Retire. Retire, please. Give some good years for the kingdom of God. How long will you work? Who wants you at 80? With one stick. I am willing, brother. Wherever you go, there I will come. Who wants you, sir? Now, give your life now. 50. You work towards your finances. Have a capital fund. Work towards it. Free yourself to serve God. That's why Jesus said the harvest is plentiful. The laborers are few. Pray that the Lord may send more laborers. Don't just pray, Lord, send forth more laborers. You pray, Lord, I too want to become a laborer. Amen? Yeah. 55. Retire. Don't keep on working, working and fall dead somewhere. Matthew, wholehearted response. Look at that. God called, he responded. Everybody. You read Matthew chapter 4. Uh, Matthew chapter 4, 4 to, uh, yeah, 16 to 18, or 4 to 18. Call of Simon, Andrew, James, John. All said yes. Wholehearted response. When God called me, I resigned. Believe me. Yes, it was difficult. Not for me, people around me. I knew. I discerned. Yes, I discerned. When God calls, we want to discern. When we want to get married, no discernment. You better discern who you are getting married. You want to join the congregation, discern. Don't join and then discern. Hello. I discerned for four years. And God called me. I went. I was 32 years old. Peak of my career. Did extremely well in my computer job. And the Lord told me, enough. Leave it. I left everything, followed him. I'm here. Say hallelujah. <laughs> hallelujah. <laughs> hallelujah. <laughs> when, you, when you respond, he will bless you. He will bless you. He blessed me. Financially, materially, Ministry, family. Yeah, he blessed me. People told me, Colin, what will you do for money? What will you do? Who will it support you? I said, I don't know. But I knew one scripture. Philippians chapter 4, 19. My God will supply all my needs according to his riches. In Christ Jesus. Amen. Philippians 4, 19. Hmm? Today, 35 years. You know what people told me in my prayer group? Colin, who will marry you? Uh-huh. Who will marry you? No bonus, no salary, LTA, no medical, nothing. Who will marry you? I said, who 
knows? Nobody marries, no problem, right? Hello, look at the married people. Other side is greener, no? I said, I didn't care. If nobody married me, I didn't care. Why? Focus. Matthew 6, 33. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. All these things will be added to you. I focused on God and I ran through my life. Nothing worried me. My friends got married. Yeah, they all got married. My juniors got married. When I went to a wedding feast, they to ask me, when is your marriage? <laughs> I didn't care. I was at ease. They were uncomfortable. Not me. <laughs> Not me. But God heard it. 37, 38, 39, 40. Not married. Happy. Proclaiming the gospel. At 41, God brought prayer to me. When I was 41 years old, God brought the right woman, a woman whose mind and a heart on mission. I was 41. And I married. Amen? So we are so kingdom focused as a family. Absolutely kingdom focused. Wholehearted response. Many leaders fail in their response to God. They don't respond. Okay, Lord, not me. So soon, Lord, I still have to get married. My business is started yesterday. Just got ordained. So what? Respond. Say yes to him. Here am I, Lord, send me. Yeah. Here am I, Lord, send me. We say, here am I, Lord, keep me. Send someone else. Have you noticed how we, we talk? You talk to the youth, they will tell you, why me? I'm only young. I'm only 25. Take that uncle, 58, retired, doing nothing, watching TV. Take him. Go to that uncle. Why me? I'm retired. Take the youth. They do nothing. Go to the, who's going in the Catholic church? Nobody. That's why they call the Catholic church a sleeping giant. Nobody wants to go. Will you go? Will you go? You know why you came here? To go. You know that? On Friday, of course. Yeah, you came here to go. God has called you to go. He said, come and he'll say, go too. We don't hear go. We only hear come. Everywhere come. Hey, excuse me. There is come and go. That is how the gospel is all about. Many leaders start very well. They give their heart to God. They surrender their life to God. They surrender everything. After a few years, inside the heart, there are other hearts. You see that? Attachment. This problem, that problem, money, women, property. Gone. Erosion. That love has gone for God. That first love has gone. There's an erosion. Something else is occupying your heart. Is it like that? Clean it. Then only God will use you. The leadership style of Jesus is that, you know, good leaders are those who are willing to take risks. Hello? Are you with me? Say hallelujah. How much of risk we take? Hey, married people. And what about the religious? Didn't you take a risk? Yeah, we take risks. Take a risk for the Lord. I, I took a risk for the Lord. I still remember. I still remember, you know, when I was in college and I finished my, my commerce, um, th there was this girl. She was also in a prayer meeting. This is what she told me. She said, Colin, why don't you come to Dubai? My father is in an excellent position. He can get you a job the next day. 1980. I told this girl, Rosa, I am not coming. I am just five years old in Jesus. I want to make sure I build my life on the firm foundation. I am not coming. And what a good decision I made. That's why I'm here. If I went to Dubai, who knows where I would have been. Chasing money maybe. But look at me. What I'm trying to say is, take a little risk. Yeah, risk your life, job, risk not being too stereotyped, risk being criticized, persecuted, not uh, risk having enemies, risk it, it's okay. Will everybody, uh, will everybody be pally with you? No. Will you get enemies? Sure. So who 
cares? Did Jesus have enemies? Yes. More than you and me. So what? So what? Preach correctly. And preach the gospel. Nobody can say anything to you. Look at Jesus. His leadership style. Luke 14, 33. Unless you renounce everything, you cannot be my disciple. Unless you renounce everything, you cannot be my disciple. Renounce. You know what renounce means? Give up. Detachment. Nothing wrong to own a house. Nothing wrong to drive a car. But be detached. So that tomorrow, God can put your finger and say, give that car away. Who knows? Detachment is important. That's the Christian. Jesus was detached, you know. Uh, uh, left everything. That's the leadership style of Jesus. Nothing, nothing attached. Fox have holes, birds have nests. Son of man has no place to lay his head. <laughs> what an amazing style of Jesus. In the year 1992, I was invited to preach a college retreat in one, of, one city in India. I reached at 11.30 in the night and next morning, I, another guy also was with me, next morning we met the principal. He looked at me and he said, are you the one who's going to preach a, the retreat? I said, yeah. Because he thought Colin means six foot three, you know. This guy is four feet, nothing. Oh, you? I said, yeah. But that, that, that was my first year in mission. No? So no, I was not so bold, eh? like now. Then he asked me, what do you do? Hmm. I just left my job. Huh? Hmm. Not so easy to tell the priest, I'm a full-time missionary. Huh? He said, what? I told him, Father, I'm a full-time missionary. What? He told me this. You know what he told me? It's the greatest mistake you made in your life. That's the greatest mistake you have made in your life. Look at me, he said. Wherever I go in India, I have food, shelter, clothing. What do you have? Who will take care of you? You know what I told the priest? Father, birds have, fox have holes. <laughs> birds have nests. The son of man has no place to lay his head. I am still here. He is gone. Look at the life of Jesus. What made Jesus amazing? He worked with everybody. Sinners. Prostitutes. But he was not contaminated. He had the power. Through the power of the Holy Spirit. We also must mix with everybody. But not be contaminated. That's called separation. Yeah? Jesus' leadership style is what? You renounce self. Uh -huh. Very difficult to renounce self. No. Renounce it. You know what Jesus said in Matthew 16, 25? Whoever wants, whoever wants to save his life will lose it. But whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. Yeah. Renounce self. Renounce position. Renounce power. Renounce money. Renounce it. Renounce. I really don't like when people introduce me. To be honest with you, I have no control over it. But some people introduce me and say, you know, he's an international speaker. What does it matter? Am I greater if than a local speaker because I'm international? Who said so? Look at this problem we are creating. We are unnecessarily creating. He is better than you. Who said so? Don't make a big fuss about these things, you know. We sometimes we like these titles, isn't it? We like these titles. He is so and so. Wow. He runs the biggest ministry in India. Wow. He is so and so. Excuse me. Where are problem? You see, we are focusing on the wrong things. Jesus emptied himself. He renounced self. Please renounce self. Renounce it. That is the leadership style of Jesus. Yeah, a good leader introspects. Yeah, look into your life, introspects, evangelization, evangelizing oneself in the power of the Holy Spirit. That's how you become like Jesus. Look into your life. Introspect. 
Psalm 139. 23 and 24. You all must be knowing this, right? Beautiful psalm written by David in Psalm 139, 23 and 24. David says, Search me, O God. Know my heart. Try me. Know my thoughts. See if there is any wicked way in me. Lead me in the way everlasting. That leader will make progress in God when he introspects and he empties himself. Empty himself of pride. Correct, no? Position. What is the leadership style of Jesus? You see, you must learn to see his face. In your time of prayer, learn to see his face. Not only to seek and to seek and to seek. Seeking is okay. But seeking is for beginners. Not for leaders. A leader sees Jesus. Yeah, I go to the blessed sacrament not to seek him, to see him. See him. That's maturity. That's seeking. Psalm 34 verse 5 says, Look to him and be radiant. Yeah, this is the scripture written all across Porta Ashrams, right? Across the world. Why? Look to him. Be radiant. Don't just seek him. Seek him. Seek him. That's for baby. You want to get over your problems? You want to tide any mountain? You want to tide an illness or disease? Look to him. See him. That's the power. Here is wise. When you see him, you'll hear his voice. John chapter 10 verse 27 says, My sheep hear my voice. I know them and they follow me. When you see him, you will hear him. If you seek him, you, will, you cannot hear him. See him. He will hear his voice. Direction. He will put you on the right path. He will direct your choices. He will tell you what to do. He will tell you what to say. Because the Holy Spirit that is in you will become alive. Holy Spirit. More activity will come in your life. We'll talk about it later. Do his will. Matthew 7 verse 21. Not all who say, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven. But he that does the will of my father in heaven. Amen. Say hallelujah. 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 This is the power of Jesus. This is the style of Jesus. He always to see the father. Hear his voice. And do the will of the father. No wonder he was successful. We want to become like Jesus. My last point. The leadership style of Jesus is this. Become the message and the messenger, please. Don't only become the messenger. Hello? Don't only become the messenger. Please become the message too. You must walk the talk. Just don't talk. Why was Jesus? Jesus' leadership style is he was the message and the messenger. I tell this to everybody I want to tell you before I close. Please listen to me. Are you listening? Please listen to me. Follow the message, not the messenger. Don't make the messenger your God. Hello, whoever he is. Retreat director, so what? Is that savior or what? There is only one savior, sir. You know who that is? Jesus. Follow the message, not the messenger. Follow the message. Don't make people idolize people. No, that is not the leadership style of Jesus. No, 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 no. That's not the leadership style of Jesus. But make sure you follow the message. Follow the message you're getting at this retreat. Don't become, you know, uh, idolize people. No, no, don't do that. Make sure you follow the message and very, very important in our lives. Yeah? So in conclusion, a good leader will imitate and follow the leadership style of Jesus. You want to be an ex excellent leader, not a mediocre leader, just came into position. Anywhere, I'm only five years, I'm going to be only three years, then I will go somewhere else. Hello, excuse me. Are you living like that? One term in our charismatic prayer meeting. One term, then they move you out. Another term, that's why, oh, excuse me. Make sure you influence. Make sure you follow the, imitate the life of Jesus. Make sure you exercise influence. They will remember you and the message you preached. 
You know that? Focus on people's development. Make them disciples of Jesus. Yeah? Focus on people, not on projects. Train sheep. Listen to me. Train sheep to become shepherds. Don't train sheep to be sheep. What's the point? You failed in your duty. 